There are various ways to collect information or data that can be used to answer research questions. However, it's important to keep in mind that there is no perfect way to gather data. Every research method has its advantages and disadvantages. This video lecture is a very brief overview of data collection methods, focusing on differentiating between qualitative and quantitative research and introducing the traditional types of survey research methods which gather different types of data. First, let's discuss the difference between quantitative and qualitative research. The easiest way to think of quantitative research is as research involving numbers, while qualitative research focuses on words. In the field of communication studies, we often differentiate the tracks students take as quantitative or qualitative. If your focus is on statistical analysis and your thesis involves survey or experimental research, you are on the quantitative track. If, however, you focus on rhetorical criticism, you are on the qualitative track. Let's break that down a bit further. While qualitative research evaluates, quantitative research counts occurrences or instances, collecting measurements. Qualitative research uses concepts to explain what is observed and evaluated. Quantitative takes the data, the counts, and collects them and processes them. When you focus on the aesthetics in the text of the rhetoric being analyzed, you are engaged in qualitative research. If, however, you count how many times or how many instances a word or concept occurs in the data being analyzed, you are conducting quantitative research. Qualitative is theoretical, quantitative statistical. Qualitative analysis interprets and, based upon that interpretation, ends up evaluating. So if you want to cast doubt on the conclusions, you attack the interpretation. In contrast, Quantitative research takes the data collected to describe, explain, or predict, which leads to a hypothesis or theory. In quantitative, the method used to collect the data, to count, measure, and analyze that data is what is attacked if the conclusions are questioned. Before we get to the different types of data collection methods or research methods that are traditionally used to gather qualitative and quantitative data, let me clear up a potential misunderstanding. It's how you use the data gathered that determines if it is qualitative or quantitative research. You can use a traditionally quantitative method to gather qualitative data. And conversely, you can use a traditionally qualitative research method to collect quantitative data. You could count the number of times a word or a phrase is mentioned in a focus group transcript, for example, ending up with a number, quantitative data gathered from what is traditionally a qualitative research method. Now, you'll likely be questioned on whether the quantitative technique is appropriate or not, or about whether you used alternative versions of the word or phrase, meaning the method is being critiqued. So it's how the data are used that makes the difference between qualitative and quantitative research. Qualitative survey research, and survey is in quotes because we're not talking about survey as an overview, as in a survey of areas of studies in the field of communication but survey as in research, referring to collecting numerical data. So qualitative survey research is research based upon observations which are difficult to summarize or distill as numbers. As mentioned earlier, a typical example is focus group research, which traditionally involves groups of 8 to 12 people who, via a guided discussion with a trained facilitator, provide feedback about products, services, campaign messages, and so on. Executive interviews are usually considered qualitative research because they are usually very in-depth discussions with a relatively few number of participants. While this type of interview follows a script, the script is very loosely adhered to because the goal is not to get numbers, but to get an idea of the feelings and impressions of the respondents. Ethnographic research studies are very time-consuming. The Association for Qualitative Research describes ethnographic studies this way. Originating in anthropology, this term traditionally refers to a practice in which researchers spend long periods living within a culture in order to study it. The term has been adopted within qualitative market research to describe occasions where researchers spend time, hours, days, or weeks, observing and or interacting with participants in areas of their everyday lives. This contrasts with interview-based research in which interaction with respondents is limited to a conventional interview or group discussion format is more limited in time and often takes place outside the participant's own environment. 
So if you have a researcher come into your office and watch you work on a particular computer software program to see where you're looking, how frustrated you are, where you're clicking the mouse, you would be involved in an ethnographic study. As you can imagine, this results in lots of data which are very difficult to reduce to numbers. Perhaps the easiest way to understand this is to think of some of the open-ended questions you may have responded to. If I ask, in your opinion, what are the factors people consider when thinking about what kind of car to purchase? I might get responses that range from one word, reliability, to long monologues about the last time someone bought a car and what was wrong with it and why that affects his or her decisions on future automobile purchases. In order to understand what people are thinking, you would want to peruse all of the comments to get a flavor of the opinions. You may look for themes, but it's very hard to reduce all of this to numbers. Similarly, some text-based interviewing is qualitative. One project I worked on for the California Exposition and State Fair involved getting teens to visit the fair and when they got to specific locations, text in their impressions to a researcher. Responses were all over the board and when taken as a whole provided insight into their perceptions. But again, they were very difficult to reduce to numbers. We couldn't, for example, say that 27% of teens felt that a particular exhibit was boring or the bomb. As soon as you reduce what they have said to numbers, you are conducting quantitative research. Again, quantitative research is data in numerical form. Perhaps the quantitative method you are most familiar with is telephone interviewing, where a trained interviewer contacts you via phone and asks you some questions, most often providing you with a choice of answers to select. While in the past, interviewers actually picked up the phone, dialed a telephone number, and read the questions off of a paper and recorded your answers on a response sheet, another sheet of paper, today you'll likely be interviewed by an interviewer who is reading the questions off a computer screen and directly inputting your data or your responses into a computer, Computer Assisted Telephone Interviewing, or CADI. Mail surveys, or those paper and pencil surveys that you answer, are also quantitative research methods. They are designed to gather data from large groups of people so that their answers can be summarized as numbers. Intercept surveys, such as when you are intercepted during your shopping at a mall to answer a face-to-face -face survey, is also a quantitative research method, as are online surveys. But just as the example of open-ended questions hopefully solidified what qualitative research is, Closed-ended questions help explain quantitative research methods. If I asked you to quantify the importance of various factors when choosing a car, listing off price, fuel economy, etc., I'm asking you a closed-ended question. Any research that provides you a list of possible answers so that they can summarize those answers to say, for example, that 23% of car shoppers claim that quality dependability is the most important factor when choosing a car would be quantitative research. And according to the NADA, the National Automobile Dealers Association, that was far and away the most important, well ahead of fuel economy at only 14%. As researchers, we tend to specialize in specific types. If you are comfortable conducting focus groups, you tend to look at every research project as requiring a focus group. If you prefer to conduct online research, you tend to recommend that method for virtually every project. So you should beware the law of the hammer. Abraham Maslow in 1966 observed, I suppose it's tempting if the only tool you have is a hammer to treat everything as if it were a nail. Instead, you should be familiar enough with all types of research methods so that you can analyze the research needs and choose the best research method to fit those needs. As mentioned earlier, you should keep in mind that the definitions of the research methods are a bit mushy. As an example, a paper and pencil survey can be done in person or via snail mail, or with responses collected via scantrons. Or that same paper and pencil survey can be self-administered, like a comment card for a satisfaction survey left in your hotel room, or an intercept survey where an interviewer recruits you and hands you a survey for you to complete yourself and then return to the interviewer. Online surveys, which are emailed to respondents, might be closer to a paper and pencil survey than those that are purely online, where someone goes to a website and answers questions on a website. Further, many research projects are using multiple methods to gather data. Some projects, for example, begin with an email survey and, if no response, follow up with a telephone survey. 
or upon completion of a home security installation project, the technician may hand you a comment card that can be mailed in, faxed in, or via a web address completed online. We call these types of projects multimodal research. Regardless, there is no doubt that technology is changing everything. Processing time. What is the difference between qualitative and quantitative research methods? Can a telephone survey be used to gather qualitative data? Do you have a preference of a type of data collection method? Now when you are recruited for a research study, you'll be able to determine what type of study it is. And perhaps more importantly, you'll be able to differentiate between the types of data that study is gathering.